Thank you, Thurman. Let's raise our Bibles. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our stands forever. Before we get going, I, I want to go to the Lord again in prayer this morning. <clears throat> Gracious Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this opportunity that we have to come and worship you. We're thankful for the opportunity that we get to come and sing praises to you. We're thankful that we get to do this freely. <laughs> Lord, we're thankful that, um, that even though tomorrow is not promised to us, Lord, that we freely get to worship you. Lord, in however we want to worship you. And Lord, I just pray right now that you would minister to the hearts of those that are here. Minister to, to our souls, Lord. Help us to be so thankful for the things that you've given us. And help us to consider what we may give to you. And we pray this in your son's name. Amen. Have you ever desired a certain gift I mean, whether it be like for your birthday or, or, or for Christmas, you've desired something, you've really wanted something for so long, and you've gone to great lengths to make sure that everyone knew this gift that you wanted. You know, you, you threw out hints, you did different things, maybe you left a website open on the computer, and then you found out that no one was really listening to all of your hints. I heard this past week about one woman who told her husband that she wanted something that would help make her more lovable and more beautiful at Christmas. And so he got her an exercise bike and a bathroom scale. <laughs> now I can tell you, he must have been a rookie because I don't know what he was thinking. Okay. And then I read some time ago that there are 15 million pounds of fruitcake that are given at Christmas. Do you hear that? 15 million pounds of fruitcake. Of course, no one knows how long a particular fruitcake has been around <laughs> and how often that fruitcake has been re-gifted. You know, from one person to the next. And, and I would imagine that only a small fraction of those 15 million pounds of fruitcake are actually eaten after they've been given. Some of you may have already even opened a gift this morning. My daughter's lobbying me to open at least one gift tonight. But thinking about the gifts God has given us, especially the first Christmas morning, I can't help but think about those things here this Christmas Eve morning. I think about gifts that he gave us like joy, that enduring gift. Or what about peace, that mysterious gift of peace and how that works. Then he also gave us purpose, that indispensable gift. But he also gave us the gift of salvation, the eternal gift. But the ultimate gift was his own son, Jesus, the priceless gift. So I'm going to give you a couple scriptures. There's no slide, and they're not written in your, in your bulletin there. We have to do that early, and I was still working on this yesterday. But in 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19, it says, For you know that it is not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. Paul puts it this way in 2 Corinthians 9.15, Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. See, God is the original gift giver. He gives us life. He gives us all good things that we get to enjoy every day. Everything that we have ultimately comes from God. We breathe his air. We eat his food. We drink his water, and we reside in this world, and so much more. All things given to us by God. God truly is generous, and he loves to give us all the things that we need for life on this earth and beyond. And again, the greatest gift he ever gave was his son. Jesus is the greatest gift of all. None, none other gifts really matter. 
if we didn't first have a relationship with Jesus Christ, all of the other gifts that God has given to us flow out of that gift of his son. So, where does that leave us this morning? What do we give a loving father like that? That's given us so much, what do we give him? And how do you give to God? Well, we're going to look at some of the characters of the Christmas story. And given to us by God, that story, the great story. And we're going to see how they did things and what we can learn from, from them. So number one, we're going to start off with Mary. Mary gave obedience without reservation. Mary gave obedience without reservation. Consider Mary's situation for a moment. She's pregnant. She's forced to travel a long distance, even though she's about to deliver this baby. And then she ends up delivering her baby in a shelter that houses farm animals. And the only place to lay her baby is in a manger. Really, it's a, a feed trough. Notice Mary's attitude in Luke 2.19. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. In spite of all she'd been through, and in spite of all the activity and the excitement surrounding her, Mary took the time to contemplate God's word. I believe God chose Mary because he knew that she would listen to him and take seriously what she was told. Often we're too busy to really listen, and sometimes fears and doubts get in our way to responding in the proper way to God's word. But Mary laid aside her questions, her doubts, her fears, and she pondered the words God had spoken to her. One translation for pondered says treasured. Mary chose to treasure God's words instead of dwelling on the hardships of her life at that time. We can learn a lot from Mary. Number two, Joseph gave his complete cooperation. Joseph gave his complete cooperation. If you had been Joseph, and I've often pondered this, if you had been Joseph, how would you have responded to Mary's story? If your fiancé had come to you and told you she was going to have a baby and that the father was God... What would your response have been? Would you have believed her? As unbelievable as it must have sounded to Joseph, his response to this problem or this seeming problem was complete cooperation. Matthew 1.24 says, When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. I think the point here is that God chooses people who listen when he speaks. People who not only listen, but also obey. Not just hearers of the word, but doers. They obey even when they don't understand, or what they've been asked to do doesn't seem to make sense. Now, I know... Most teens here, when they're told something by their parents that doesn't seem to make sense, they just run off and do it immediately. They don't question at all. Oh, sorry. We do question. If something doesn't seem to make sense in our minds, we question it. Whether we're young or old, we question things that don't make sense to us. But when the angel assured Joseph that what Mary had told him was true, he responded with cooperation. So I think we can learn from Mary and from Joseph. Number three, the shepherds gave their praises. The shepherds gave their praises. Shepherds in those days were considered social outcasts. They didn't usually smell very pleasant. Tim's telling us that story. They were uneducated. Their job was considered to be lousy work. According to the world, they were low lowlifes. However, God considered them worthy to be part of the Christmas story. And you know why he did that? He could have invited, think about this, he could have invited 
all kinds of people from the world to be present. The kings, different rulers, but he didn't. He invited lowly shepherds because he knew that their response would be that of celebration. He knew that they would be excited. He knew that they, that they would get excited, and, and they did. When the angels came and they told the shepherds the good news of Jesus' birth, they got excited and they ran into town to tell everybody, full of enthusiasm. In Luke chapter 2, verse 16 and verse 20, so they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And then in verse 20 it says, the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. See, they got excited. God shares his message with people who take it seriously enough to get excited about it. The shepherds got excited when they heard the good news. In my opinion, it's just my opinion, that I think God is bored with a lot of churches today. One of the things that I like to do when I travel or if I'm out of town is I like to go to other churches. I like to visit them. And I usually go in there with a very open mind. I just want to go see what God has, what is God doing there? Especially when I've got to go to churches in other countries, because then you're getting to see God in another way that is foreign often to us. And they worship the same God. And we get to go see that. And when we were in the Dominican Republic at this church, and I've told this story where the, it was hot and the air conditioning went out, but they were still excitedly praising and worshiping God with no electricity, no AC, and this guy right here, this guy was about to pass out. <laughs> I mean, I thought, I, Desi, Preston, Lucas, y'all are going to have to carry me because I'm about to pass out. It's so hot. But they were so excited, so excited about that. But I think God is bored with a lot of churches because they don't always have excitement for him. I think he looks at us and he yawns and he says, is that the best that you can do? Where's the excitement for Christ? Where's the excitement for my son? Where's the excitement for forgiveness and life's being changed? Where's that serving and giving attitude? We're supposed to be imitators of his son. And we're just worried about, can we make it to the Chiefs game in time? What's for lunch? Where is the love? that he commands us to live with. Some churches are so cold and unwelcoming. I'm not saying that's here by any means. But some churches are really cold. Everything in some churches is so dead, you want to make sure you didn't walk in for a funeral, not a church service. Is there a body down front? Because something's not right. That's why we don't apologize for trying to create an atmosphere of celebration here at Open Door. It's why I get excited about Annie and her praise team and hearing them practice and getting excited about the songs we're going to sing. And if somebody wants to clap, if they want to stand, if they want to raise their hand, I, I'm all for it. Let's get excited about the God that we serve. And I get excited when we can sing out, mainly because then you can't hear me sing, but when I get excited when we sing out, clap some, celebrate. I'm convinced a spirit of celebration is what God dearly wants. David said, I was glad when, they came, when he said unto me, let us, get, let us go into the house of the Lord. He didn't say, no, I was sad or bad or bored, but glad. <laughs> Number four, the wise men gave their best. Most scholars say that from the time they first saw Jesus' a star in the east and began to follow it to where Jesus was, a year and a half had passed. They had been persistent, determined, and dedicated to get there. That's, that's a long time. Matthew 2.11 says, On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. And they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They gave their best. Their best efforts and their best gifts. And I believe that all these characters here in the Christmas story were chosen to participate in, the, in this story because of their attitude and because what they could bring. Mary's obedience, 
Joseph's cooperation, the shepherd's celebration, and the wise men their best. What will you give this year? What will you give the God of the universe that created all things? What will you give him this year? Think about this. April Thrush was here last week, and she asked the question, do you really love God? I've been pondering that and thinking about this this week. Do we really love God? And then what are we going to give him? What do you give the person who has everything? Well, number one, like Mary, I will give obedience without reservation. Have you ever heard someone say, God never speaks to me? I never hear from God. How can I obey if I don't know what he wants me to do? Well, maybe it's because your life is a little too busy. When God tries to call you, you put him on hold. You've got other things on your li- going on in your life, and you don't have time to be still and listen to God. Maybe you tell God that you'll get back with him later. It's like you're giving that email response that I'm out of the office and I'll get back with you. We need to treasure God's word like Mary did. And when we do, we will have no, no problem obeying without reservation. Number two, like Joseph, I will give God my complete cooperation. A man attended a church where the choir sang a song with only three words. They sang this song with just three words. Yes, Lord, yes. They, the song built and built until the whole congregation began to sing with them, and they were singing it out, yes, Lord, yes. Finally, the song ended, and the pastor walked to the pulpit and began to pray, Lord, you've heard our answer, now tell us what to do. That's the attitude that we need to have. Yes, God, whatever you want me to do, I'm willing. Yes, Lord, wherever you want me to go, I'm willing. Yes, Lord, yes. Even when it seems, and this is the hard part for us, to not make sense, we say to God, here I am, use me. Number three, like the shepherds, I will give my praises. Psalm 1611 says, tells us that God's presence fills us with joy. No matter what we may be facing in 2018, as we look a week from now, we're going to start a new year, no matter what we're facing, no matter how daunting it may seem, no matter how difficult it may be for us, we can have joy because of the assurance of God's presence. We should celebrate God's presence. I mean, we should be excited that God is here with us. His presence fills us with joy. The knowledge of his presence is all we really need to know that, hey, I'm not walking this path by myself. If I am committed to him, he is there walking alongside there with me. If for some of you have felt like God has maybe abandoned you or you feel like you're not as close to God right now as maybe you were at some point when you had a spiritual high, maybe you were at a conference, I've talked to the kid, our teens about this, maybe you were at Move or you were on a mission strip or there's some time in your life when you felt extremely close to God and right now as we're going to head into 2018, you feel like God has left you. Let me just tell you this, God has not moved You have moved away from him. God is still there waiting for you to be obedient and to walk with him. So like the shepherds, we should celebrate the fact that the Messiah, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Savior is with us. We're not on this journey by ourselves. We need to live that way. Always live that way. Not just at Christmas time. Always. And like the wise men, I will give my best. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. What he's basically saying there in Romans 12, 1 and 2, give yourself. What are you going to give? Give yourself. What do you give back to God? You give yourself. Who started this gift-giving idea anyway? 
As I said earlier, God did when he gave us the first real Christmas gift in his son. And because he gave, we give. We need to ask ourselves today, whose birthday is it anyway? Whose birthday are we celebrating anyway? It's not ours. But when we kind of throw out the suggestions and the gifts we want, we act like it's our birthday. We give gifts to everyone else. We give gifts to like the mailman and the teachers and the all kind of people. But what will we give Jesus Christ for his birthday? What are we going to give? Again, what do you give the person who has everything? Well, there are three things you can give God that he doesn't have unless you give it to him. There's three things that you can give to God that unless you give them to him, he doesn't have them. He does not have your time, he does not have your treasures, and he does not have your talent unless you give it to him. He gave it to you, but unless you give it back to him, he does not have it. He does not have your time, your treasure, or your talent. He does not have these unless you give it to him. So, on this Christmas Eve, can we show God our love by giving him all that we are? Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, I am so thankful for this day, Lord. I'm thankful for the opportunity that you allowed me to be able to wake up today. That you allowed us to be able to come together, Lord. That you allowed us to be able to see people that maybe we haven't seen in a while. Lord, that we get to hear kids sing, and we get to hear older people sing, and sing out in their praises because they love you. And so, Lord, we want to learn from these people that we studied in your word. Lord, the people that we're familiar with from, from this story, Lord, we can learn so much from Mary and her obedience, from Joseph and his cooperation, from the shepherds, Lord, we can learn from the wise men who gave their best. There's so many things that we can learn, Lord. And so I pray right now, Lord, that we would do that. And Lord, if there is anybody here, Lord, who knows a lot of these stories and heard different things, but they do not have a relationship with you, Lord, I pray that you would speak to their hearts right now. Help them to know that all they have to do is just come to you and ask for forgiveness and turn away from their sinful ways, Lord, and that you will give them new life and eternal life in the greatest gift of all, your son. So Lord, right now, as we're going to be here singing in just a moment, Lord, I pray that you would work on our hearts, Lord. If there's anybody here who, who doesn't know you, Lord, that you would help them to be able to know you and be secure in that today. Not just to know about you, but to know you personally. And then Lord, for the rest of us that know you, Lord, Lord, help us to ponder what gift we may give to you. Help us to really understand it's not about us. It's all about you. Lord, forgive us for our selfish ways. Forgive us for putting you off. Lord, we ask that you would um, forgive us in a way, Lord, that we may give back to you our time, our treasures, our talents that were first a gift from you, Lord. We want to give them back to you. We want to give you our all. And we pray this in your son's name. Amen. If you would stand with us. And while we're standing, if, if God is doing something in you, he was doing something in me this week where I was pondering how much do I love God and what am I going to give to God? And so we've had some great time, the Lord and I. But if if you want to come forward, if you need to have some time, if you need to get together with someone next to you and just have some prayer time and, and, and say, God, this is what I want to give to you. And maybe there's somebody sitting near you who's never, ever asked Jesus to be their Savior. If that is the case, maybe you will walk down with them to the front. Pray with them. Help them to understand what it means to be a Christian. So join with us in singing, and whatever you need to do, whatever business you need to do with God, you take care of that right now.